What is the worst thing you've ever done in the Sims series? I made a guy who was a compulsive neat freak. Put him in a really surreal little house with a wedding buffet and a hamster or something. Deleted the door. Eventually he went insane from lack of cleanliness and depression over his little rodent friend dying. And starved to death once the banquet rotted. I put the resulting urn in the room. I then repeated an identical scenario several times. Always keeping the urns in the room. Eventually the 10th iteration of this guy is up all night. Every night. Terrified of a parade of ghosts of himself. Holy crap. I was always too lazy to actually build my own home from scratch and so whenever I started a new file, my immediate goal was to move into the nicest house already on the map. Well I scoped it out, and a nice couple lived there. So, naturally, I had an affair with the lady of the house, convinced her to divorce her husband and stay in the house, married her, moved into the house, knocked her up for good measure, divorced her and kicked her out of the house. It was a nice house. Building the houses is the best part. I built a haunted house and killed like 3 families for the cemetery. The game literally gave me a pop up saying the sims is a life simulation, and that I'm killing too many sims. It's not too sadistic per se, but it involved a lot of deaths. I wanted to make a church with a full, complete graveyard. So I built a small, simple structure moved in a family of 8. Get them all inside. Remove the door. Fill with fire. Yay. 8 new tombstones. Repeat like 9 times, and you've got a full graveyard of tombstones. Then I built the church and moved in a priest to live there and tend to the grounds. Unfortunately for the priest the grounds had been tainted by the dark rituals of the past and several dozen ghosts would materialize every night, tormented by the crowds of specters. He himself died 3 days later due to never being able to sleep. Comma it's not too sadistic. I would like to know what you think really sadistic is. So, in my most recent sims playthrough, I found this girl that I really wanted my sim to marry. Problem is she already had a husband, so rather than just doing the, relatively, normal thing and just increasing the relationship and convincing her to break up with him, I instead became best friends with her husband, convinced him to move in with me, and then drowned him in a pool so I could marry his wife. Then I moved in with his wife, who lived in a huge mansion, and killed the rest of her family because I didn't feel like taking care of the other sims that she lived with but I still wanted the house. This is how the Great Gatsby should have gone. I made a house filled with swimming pools so that everything was on an island, with all of the constant swimming to eat, sleep, pee, play basketball, etc not to mention constantly changing from clothes to swimsuits and back. My sims spent their lives in perpetual exhaustion. I recently found out you can kill old sims by overexertion and the sims 4. My sim is going around town fricking all the old people to death and once death shows up she proceeds to make friends with him. I'm counting up graves until my sim can bang death. In Markin Magic I had a brilliant dog called AJ who was loved by the whole family. He never had an off day and brought sheer joy to his owners. Decided to train my wizardry and get the spell that allowed you to turn pets into humans. So AJ could be even more a part of the family. He turned out to be the biggest freaking ass bag as a person and was abusive to his family. So we had to take care of him. I built a monolithic tomb and trapped him inside. The family stood out front playing music to him as he slowly starved. They bought a new dog and played with it happily outside his eternal resting place to torture his trapped soul. Eventually a dragon burnt down the house and killed them all. What a game. Man I need to play the sims. Me and some friends made a house with 6 slave sims that worked to finance the luxurious lifestyle of the remaining 2. We locked the 6 sims in tiny, separate rooms with a work table, chair, table, bed and small TV, and played glass windows looking into the main hallway so that the owner sims could watch them working. One slave sims job was to cook meals for the other 5, while the majority of the others time was spent making garden gnomes for selling. Oh my god that firework one is fantastic. I was starving my sim and he sneakily called up for a pizza. When it was delivered I made him throw it in the garbage. Then he cried. This made me laugh more than any other story. I made my sim have 6 kids, back to back, with 4 different guys. 
I move in with the most recent baby daddy and kill him off so that none of my kids know their fathers. While all this is happening, I also flirt with everyone in town who will give me the time of day, make them break up with their partner, and then ask them to be friends. I enjoy making enemies. I also go to the graveyard and write really demeaning things on the epitaphs. I love making a town W and all her kids have different dads. I don't kill them off though. Okay, so I make lots of friends with my sims. Then I invite all of them over and led them into a room in my backyard. The room has a refrigerator, sink, toilet, and bed. Then my sim leaves and I delete the door. I have 10 plus in there already and am waiting for people to come over. I want the whole city in there. After a while the sims decide they're done at your house and want to leave so they keep saying goodbye while waving. But since they can't leave it's a monotonous chant of them saying goodbye 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 goodbye. It's hilarious. You may already have a system like this but you can prevent them escaping when you bring a new one in by building a quarantine wall and then deleting it after the door so they mix in with the rest. Worst. I got my best moment. My greaser jock type turned out to be a sensitive artsy type, never leaving home and working on masterpieces. One day, a thief broke in, and they got into a fight, though my guy got his butt kicked, the thief ran. A few days later, I was looking through his relationships, and there was a lady that didn't like him. No idea why, just they were angry at one another, so I called her up. They turned out to have a lot in common and got along really well. Well enough that she was moving in a few days later. Career. Burglar. That be. This sounds like the plot to a really cheesy romantic comedy. I think this was Sims 2. I made a reality TV show house full of stereotypes, left them on free will mode, and had someone voted off every 3 days based on whoever was the least popular. The person voted off was murdered. Naturally. Met. I'd watch it my teenage son decide waking up to his alarm and getting on the school bus was unimportant, so I locked him in a 1x1 room until he peed himself and died in the puddle. I had my sim impregnate every female, adult, sim in the game. He had a bunch of kids he never visited. All the men hated him, and the women eventually hated him because he was constantly cheating. Whenever the younger female sims became of age, my sim would impregnate them. 2. After a few generations, the entire town was full of half-siblings, which made them not want to mate together. They slowly died. This was The Sims 3 on PS3. BTW. I've never played the PC version. I'm sure that's 100x more glorious. Goddammit Craster. A few friends and I had a contest. We had 4 hours to rack up as many points as possible. You could get points in a ton of ways and I went for the family portraits. 1.4 every unique self portrait of someone in my family. I had two wives locked up in separate buildings on my lot. Since they couldn't reach me to catch me in the act, I could keep them both pregnant 24 stroke 7. Then I placed all the babies in my daycare room, made a portrait of them and then I let them die. I tried keeping the babysitter there continuously at first, but it was just a hassle. This one is dark. Beats easily my feeding family to plants in Sims 2. Tried to initiate a threesome. Ended up woohooing a husband and wife in front of each other. Their marriage never recovered. I would train my son to be a good enough painter to do screenshot paintings. I then forced him to paint me naked or having sex with his mother other women. I hung the paintings everywhere. This one's great. Well done. On the PC Sims medieval version I got pregnant 4 times and forced the eldest friend of my children to have sex with me once he was an adult. My other children starved to death, but it was okay. I wanted to keep the royal bloodline going. They were ugly anyway. The blood of the dragon must remain pure. I wanted to see how many children I could have out of wedlock and still be an absent father. I would strike up conversations with every woman on the street, invite them home, seduce them, and ignore them. Rinse, repeat. Eventually my sims family tree grew incredibly large with children I had never met. I think I got to around 40 kids or so. This was the sims 3, so you could walk around downtown and hang out with your neighbors. Eventually, my sims little black children started popping up all over town. Easily recognizable in a game that has predominantly white sims. Every time I saw a black kid, I would run away to avoid meeting them. 
They would chase me down the street with action events like tell dad about birthday or talk about school. Obviously I had to nope right out of there as quick as possible in order to maintain my status as the anonymous biological father of Uva. Half of Riverview's children. So one day I am doing my thing as usual I see a fine looking woman on the sidewalk. Can't wait to impregnate her and leave I sadistically think to myself. This is my normal routine, of course. But something was wrong. No matter how much I talk to her, the flirty options would never appear. What the heck? Is she really the first girl to not be into me? And then it hit me. This woman I'm trying to seduce is my full grown daughter who I've never met. Hence why the romantic dialogue was not available. I know it's just a game, but I think somehow I'm going to heck for this. Hence why the romantic dialogue was not available. Based on the replies in this thread I know there's a mod that helps you get around this pesky little issue. Mine goes something like this. In The Sims 3 my sim was a private investigator who had a thing for wahooing every woman who gave him a case. Every one. So eventually he got one from his friend's wife. Sticking to his code he gave her a good old fashioned wahoo. Now he thought a lot about his actions and decided it wasn't really fair to her husband and his friend that he wahooed his wife. So he wahooed him too. Confessed to cheating to both of them. Broke them up. Abandoned both of them. And stole his cop car. He returned it because, turns out, they're not worth anything. Cheap but government. Eventually he got sick of their attitude towards him and invited them to a party. Due to his knowledge of crimes they were never seen again and Mr. Pi gets to continue his carnal actions in peace. Private's investigator. I left my laptop for one minute and when I came back my house was on fire and all of my sims died. Never buy a fireplace. Things get pretty crazy. Build the stereotypical trailer park family. Small trailer like house. Obese parents and child with no education. And a sloppy jalopy parked in the yard. Their days consisted of ordering pizza while watching TV. Only moving off the couch for food. A few weeks in. The lovely couple accidentally had another baby. Which in turn was neglected for the entirety of its short life. Well one day little Bobby decided to bring a friend home from school. He and his friend played tag in the yard for a few hours before his friend desperately needed to use the restroom. Unfortunately for this young lad, that day was the first day anyone in the household decided to try their hand at cooking. With the baby in the crib and little George on the toilet, the trailer went ablaze. Mother, father, and son watched as their residence burned to the ground and two sims were lost. They proceeded to immediately order a pizza. Sounds like a trailer park family to me. I had a really alpha roommate in military A school. It's sort of like college for 9 months. And his name was Tony. He always thought me playing The Sims was super lame and would laugh at me. One day I decided to recreate Tony in The Sims. I made his character super buff and gave him all these awesome characteristics and got him a super sweet military job. Over the course of a week or so Tony would watch me play and he eventually got real into watching The Sims version of himself succeed. He loved that I made him. What an alpha thing right. And he loved his sim. He would ask me. Hey ant boy. How's Tony doing I got sim Tony married. With kids. I kept real life Tony up on his life in the sims military and promotions and learned trays. Then sims Tony found the Beatles. I quit sims Tony's military job and pursued a career in music. I tried to learn guitar from scratch. I played so much that I neglected my wife and my kids and hung out a lot with the young neighbor boy who also had a guitar. Sims Tony fell in love with the neighbor boy and moved in with him to a new lot. Sims Tony got fired from not showing up to work and stopped working out and became an enemy to his old friends. He was now gay Tony the failed musician. I did this over the course of another week in real life Tony would watch in the background asking me why are you doing that did he just kiss that guy does he live with that guy what the heck did you do to Tony? Real life Tony got really upset with me for a while. There was weird air in our room for a while and he would get mad when I brought up the sims. I ended up deleting the game but saving the save file. We're still friends but he never really got over it. The Ballad of Gay Tony. I found out my one sims boyfriend was cheating on her with some neighborhood w so I had her go to his house, confront him, and then set his front door, which was the only door out, on fire. Bastards died. I felt thin. 
probably when my neighbor got pee off at me for trying to pick up his baby that he left on the freaking floor. He kicked me out of the house and the next day I went over and after he put something in the oven I rushed him over to my house and trapped him there until his oven caught fire and ruined everything he owned. I thought you were going to say the baby was the something. Well this really isn't bad at all but it's a unique way of playing so I'll share. I called it dynasty mode. I came up with it when I grew bored of the sims 2. It doesn't work in sims 1. Don't know what changes would need to be made to make it work in 3 plus. But basically you start the game with a single character who will be the patriarch matriarch of your dynasty. It is also recommended to make a lot of neighbors of any family size and move them into nearby houses so your neighborhood has more people. You start the game and set the speed to its highest. 3. And go. No turning the speed down or pausing ever, except to build. No cheats. No using that anti-aging station either. The goal is to keep your line alive. Killing sims intentionally is not against the rules but should only be done to manage population succession. The goal is to get through as many generations as possible in a single sitting. Here are some observations from playing this way. With the speed set to max, micromanagement becomes impossible. Certain tasks like reaching the top of a career path or getting a sim to fall in love can become incredibly difficult. You will be super poor but you can build generational wealth over time. Having too many children too early will crush you with debt before they become adults. Some offspring will just be bad at life. Ignore them as they'll drag everyone else down. Marrying your sim to an ideal match is largely impossible. You wind up marrying them to whomever they frick up the least with. Sims die on accident a lot. When a fire happens and they get all hero about it they can easily die because you can't pause and micromanage them. It's pretty fun. In terms of the worst thing about it though it's definitely how the genetics work out. See your household ages rapidly but the rest of the neighborhood, the breeding stock if you will, stays young unless they join your house. So you get weird crap. Like imagine the first person your sim marries, the matron of your dynasty, had a sister. Three generations later your grandchild may marry his grandmother's sister who has remained perpetually young. Which is really messed up when you think about it. Let me tell you about Bob. I was playing this weird PS2 version of The Sims 2 when I was 8. I had a perfect nuclear family. The husband and wife had good jobs and the house they built was expensive yet tasteful. The children got good grades and were happy. All was well. Eventually, the family became rich enough that they needed more room and I decided to build them a new, beautiful house. I spent a good 2 hours on making this freaking house perfect. It had an indoor pool and everything. But I was only 8 and I had forgotten the most important goddamn thing to buy when you make a house. When you move, neighbors from other blocks will come over to greet you. I wasn't watching very carefully, but one of my sims must have greeted him because suddenly a bald man in a green shirt was in my house. Bob. Bob didn't speak to anybody. Bob walked up the first set of stairs and make a beeline to the kitchen. Bob immediately started a fire. Usually when a fire starts it's okay because you have an alarm which notifies the fire department. Except I forgot to buy the alarm. Usually when a fire starts, the sims will run into the room where it is and start freaking out or trying to extinguish it. Not Bob. Bob just left. Bob freaking walked away with no emotion, leaving my family to scream and freak out in the kitchen. The mother and the father were both killed in the blaze, and the children were taken away by social services because their parents were dead. They couldn't call for help because I'd also forgotten to buy a phone. I watched my favorite family burn and vowed that as long as I lived there would be no safe place for Bob. Every time I created a new neighborhood he would respawn. Always in the same crappy house without friends or family. I have killed Bob in every way available to the game. He has drowned, starved, been killed by aliens and struck by lightning. Every time I started a new game, I'd go and kill Bob first. Nobody else ever came in and burned my house down, or even used my kitchen. Only Bob. Bob is deceased in the more recent games. I like to think that I had something to do with it. May you never rest, Bob. Wow Bob uncomfortably reminds me of Twin Peaks. I would build a giant beautiful home, then have a huge dungeon jail looking place in the basement with a crappy bed, toilet, and fridge. Build tiny areas side by side with just fences and meet neighbors online and invite them over and lock them downstairs till the town was empty. I married a woman that ended up being a lazy slob. 
She wouldn't clean up after herself, refused to go to work, and would just be and moan about the filth around her. Finally I couldn't take it anymore so I lured her into a one by one room in the basement, locked the door and left her there. Eventually she died in a puddle of her own filth. I figured she could die as she lived, so then I wooed and married another woman. She was the perfect wife, we had a couple of kids, life was great. None of them knew a thing about the moldering remains in the basement. Then the ghost of my ex-wife showed up. In an effort to appease her maligned spirit I struck up a conversation. We chatted, we flirted, we rekindled what had made me marry her in the first place. The natural progression happened and we ended up in bed. There we were, me and the ghost of the wife I had starved to death, passionately entwined. When my current wife walked in. I thought tombstones and urns looked cool so I made a tiny house with a huge hedge maze taking up most of the plot. Managed to kill enough neighbors to get a neat looking garden. And if anyone is stuck in the maze at night, takes forever to get out, they'll get scared shitless by children's ghosts. Oh, and I was only killing children. In the sequel, you could buy a drink that extended your life for the cost of accomplishing life goals. You can buy these drinks with goals from any person in the family. Kept having kids and marrying into the family so I could drink their dreams and live forever. I spent all those points on drinks and only I drank them. All I did was immortally jog around town picking up rocks, stopping only to satiate my dream thirst. Something, something corporate America? You are freaking sadistic. I think I lost the sims once. I had a lovely family, a man, his wife, and one beautiful baby girl. They lived a blissful middle class life in a suburban two story home. Wealthy enough to hire a nanny, but not wealthy enough that they could stop working. One day, while the baby was left at home with the nanny, a fire started. The nanny was heating up a bottle of milk and forgot about it. By the time they got home, the whole house was in flames, and nanny and baby both were gone. The ensuing weeks were trying. Their home was haunted by the spirit of their departed child. Every time they walked by the kitchen they'd see her and weep. The loss of their child forced husband and wife to realize how estranged they had become. Every conversation was an argument or an insult. And then, one day, he hit her. I intervened on their free will to kick him out of the house after that. She had suffered too much. She would have to create a new life now, away from this haunted home and its painful memories. And so she moved into a small bungalow in the country. But she was an old woman now, with nothing left to do but pass the time while she waited to join her daughter. Every day, she would crawl out of bed to make breakfast. But on the way she would stop, she would think of the child she'd lost, or the husband who had left her, and she would break down and cry. By the time she recovered, she would have forgotten what it was she'd ever intended to do in the first place. I don't know if you can lose the sims, but that's gotta come close. Man that was depressing. I used to outline an entire room with fireplaces, have my sims light them all, then gather them together in the middle of the room. Once they were there, I would pause the game and buy wooden tables that filled the room until there was nowhere for them to escape the flames once the tables in front of them caught fire. It was a horrible death, admittedly. My half-brother did this on several occasions. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.